I'm just about to reveal one of the easiest ways that you can set up an online business using the drop servicing model where you barely have to do any work at all. So let's get started. But in order to fully understand how this works, we need to get a little bit of background. At this point, if you're watching the video, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with the dropshipping model. And in a nutshell, it's a very cool concept and it's all streamlined. Meaning that you set your own e-commerce store, you outsource products to a supplier and have your supplier do the work and ship the items to your customer. So you don't have to worry about manufacturing the products or shipping them. You just get to list them on your website and then keep the profits. That's it. So you don't have to do any of the hard work. You don't even handle the physical product yourself. But here's the thing about dropshipping. There are certain variables that you cannot really control. For instance, the delivery time. It might take that supplier a whole two or three weeks to deliver products to your customer. Not only that, but the quality of the products may not be on point, may not be as promised. And you cannot really keep track of the quality because you never handle the product yourself. You're just trusting a random supplier that you've never met with thousands of dollars worth of your savings to deliver items to your customer, which is not necessarily the best idea, right? And that is why I would focus on drop servicing instead. It works in a very similar way, but instead of selling products, we are selling services. The best part about that is that we are in control of the quality of those services. And I'm about to explain exactly why in just a second. Not only that, but we can also control the delivery time. So all the drawbacks of dropshipping have just been sold with drop servicing. But to make sure everything makes sense, let me just show you a very basic example. Let's just see that we are focusing on creating YouTube thumbnails. This is quite an oversaturated niche. It's not the best one to go for because a lot of people are doing this already. So it's really tough to stand out from the crowd. Now, if you head over to a website, a freelancing platform such as Upwork, sooner or later, once you have set up your gig, you will start getting orders. It might take a while. There may not be that many orders because of the competition. But again, this is just a very generic example, right? I want to focus on how the business model works. We don't really care about this niche in particular. Now, let's just say that you receive an order on Upwork from a client who's interested in your services, but you don't have the skill yourself or you don't have the time. You're not that good at it. And instead you want to outsource the work to someone else so you can still keep a profit without having to do the hard work yourself. Here's how you do that. What you have to do is connect to a third party website such as Penji.co, for example, where you can hire a designer. You can hire someone else to perform the services that you are supposed to perform, but you get to keep a profit. And once you're here, you can place a custom order. Moving forward, one of their team members can actually take care of your work. So someone else is going to take care of the work you are supposed to do. They will perform the service and you get to make sure that the quality is on point because you've got revisions as well. So in case your customer is not satisfied for some reason, they don't like the thumbnail, you can head over to Penji once again and start complaining about it. But let's actually niche down a little bit. Again, YouTube thumbnails are a very generic topic and the chances of actually pulling it off in 2022 are rather slim. So here's what I would rather do. What about t-shirt designs? This is not the friendliest competition either, but it's a better niche than thumbnails. And if you set up a gig on Fiverr and you start getting orders, you can outsource the work to a platform such as Vexels.com. In other words, you can pay for a monthly subscription, which is not gonna be that expensive. It's about $22 per month, and you get 100 downloads and two design requests. But we only care about those design requests, right? Once you get a custom order, you can connect to Vexels, Copy and paste the requirements from your clients and have someone else take care of the work. And I'm not even kidding. You're literally going to have a professional designer with years of experience take care of your work and you get to sell that same service to someone else for a higher price. So you get to keep a profit by just being a middleman. All you got to do is click on request custom design, then enter in your details and all your requirements and you're good to go. Someone will take care of your project and before you know it, your result will get delivered. And just as mentioned before, the delivery time is better for drop servicing than it is for drop shipping. Not only that, but you're in charge of the quality of the service. If your client doesn't like it, you can just head back over to Vexels and ask for a revision. Whereas when it comes to products, that is pretty difficult to do. You would have to ask for a refund. You would have to ship the item over to your supplier, which is going to take another two or three weeks and then wait for the new product to arrive, which is going to take another two or three weeks. So in the end, your client has waited for about one and a half months just to receive some $20 product, which is not worth it. They will most likely leave a negative review, which will drag down your reputation and your credibility. So in the end, your store is not really going to be profitable, right? You want to stay away from that. Unless you're really good at it, unless you understand what's going on behind the scenes, 
and you can really maximize everything, dropshipping is not that simple. It's not as easy as people make it seem. Let's just put it that way. But when it comes to drop servicing, for the reasons I've mentioned, it can be a lot easier. But now guys, let's take a look at some other niches. Some that are actually not oversaturated where you can get started. Remember, it doesn't necessarily matter if you already have the skill or not because you're going to outsource the work anyways. So as long as the niche is profitable, even if you know nothing about it, you should still be able to land a few jobs. And we're talking about everything, ranging from more technical tasks such as data entry or web scraping to more creative work, ghostwriting, graphic design, video creation, or saving people's time with social media marketing. There are a lot of businesses out there that don't want to spend as much time on Instagram and Facebook and all of these social media platforms as they are doing right now. So it is worth it for them to pay someone to take care of their social media profiles so they can save time and focus on doing business, which is their main thing. So here's how you can go about this. I personally think that social media management can be a great niche. The first thing you want to do is connect to Fiverr.com and search for a social media manager. And there is no shortage of these guys. There are a bunch of profiles you can work with, a bunch of freelancers who will do a great job. And make no mistake about it. This is a pretty profitable service. I mean, for this user right here, who's a top rated seller, they're charging more than $200 for their service. And this is just the starter pack. Let's see what it includes. One social media account managed through 30 posts, account optimization and scheduling, which is optional. So not much included, to be honest. That's why I tend to believe that most people will go for the standard package. Two social media accounts and an audit and brand theme add-on. Or the premium one. Standard package for three social media accounts plus a big bonus. I don't know what that is, but there's a pretty good chance people still go for the premium package. Here's another example. This freelancer is pro-verified and they are charging at least $550 for their service, right? So there's a lot of money on the table. But if you were to list your gig on Fiverr, this is not the best thing to do. You're competing against all of these sellers. So instead of competing against them, why not partner up with them? First, you do that. First off, you need to pick a freelancer that's not charging an arm and a leg. So you got to make sure that you're not paying a lot. And still, you got to keep the quality on point. So you cannot just pay the cheapest freelancer here. You still want to pay them accordingly, but you want to make sure that they are not ripping you off and they can still do a good job. Make sure that is on point. But if you're not listing your services on Fiverr, how do you get clients? Well, let me answer that for you. What you want to do is find a city and search for a specific business in that city. You don't necessarily have to do this locally. You can literally go to any place on earth using Google Maps and start browsing. Chances are most of these businesses will have a website. Everybody has a website in 2023, right? Now, what you want to do next is visit their website and go straight over to their contact section where you can find a few different things. Most of the times they will have a phone number and an email address, but that is not enough. You also got to make sure that they have a social media account because if they don't, there's no way you can help them. So you can just move on to the next one. Let me just repeat that experiment a few times before I find a suitable candidate. And there you have it. We've just found a winner and it didn't take too much searching. What I'm going to do is head over to their Instagram and take a look. You can actually tell if they are already working with the team who's doing this professionally or they're just doing it themselves. And when it comes to this page, it is rather tricky. I mean, they've got some templates here that they are using, which makes me think that they might be working with someone. So this may not be the most suitable example. This may not be the best target client, right? But you still want to take your chances. You want to send them a message and tell them about your services. If you already have a portfolio that you can showcase, if you have some previous reviews, some testimonials, you can use that in order to build credibility. And you're going to be talking to them from a place of leverage as compared to just reaching out to them and having no proof whatsoever. But if you're starting out from scratch, you don't have any results, so you should still give it your best try because you will eventually land a client. There is no doubt about it. It might take a few tries, but you will get there. And now think about it this way. These are physical businesses. They're probably making tens of thousands of dollars. So it is worth it for them to just outsource the social media management to someone overseas, not an employee, but an independent contractor, just like you, to have them take care of the posts so they don't have to waste additional time on that. Let's face it. They don't want to be posting on Instagram. They want to be doing business. But once you sign that client, what you want to do is head back over to Fiverr to the freelancer you've chosen and bring over the offer to them. You're not going to pay as much as you receive, obviously, because you want to keep a profit. But in the end, it's a win-win situation for everyone. The freelancer gets some work 
and they get paid for their work and effort, you get paid for implementing the drop servicing model and that business you are working with is saving a lot of time by not having to post on social media and schedule content and reply to comments and DMs and all that stuff. So you're not scamming anybody here. You're actually making a good contribution for that business. You're helping the freelancer by giving them a job and you're keeping a profit in the process. And this is nothing but price arbitrage. You're basically taking advantage of a difference in price between two different markets. So you've got all the resources you need to make it work. You just gotta pick your niche and go for it. That's it for now and thanks for watching.